yeah if if you remember uh, if you look at an object uh, and you want to uh, deform it you you it's clear that you know if the body is rigid you could just apply a force and and a torque and then that's it for for a deformable body if you apply a force on one side it's going to deform one way but in another direction it's going to form in another way so there's all those three at least three directions along which you can deform a body and we need we need something more than a force to describe uh, this type of action okay Cauchy's theorem that's very clever uh, what you do is you consider a tetrahedron right if I have x1 x2 x3 like this and I draw uh, take different color I draw a tetrahedron I right, just like a pyramid if you want a small one Tetrahedron made of four faces right that's the one that that we could see here that's the one coming out i'm going to call it a and then there's the tree in the back so that's hard to represent that's why i try to do with those uh dotted lines i'm just going to represent them separately Yeah, there's this one in the back here in the X1, X2, oh, sorry, X2, X3 plane. I'm going to call it B. There's the one in the X3, X1 plane. I'll call it C. And then there's the one in the horizontal plane x1 x2 plane i'm going to call it d yeah you can see how those four triangles those four blue triangles put together they create a pyramid a tetrahedron a b c d and then what about the normals the unit normal the unit normal to a I won't call it N. So it's just pointing out normal to the surface A. B, that surface B, the normal is going to be coming out like this. And outward is going to be minus E1. C. It's going to be coming out like that. It's going to be minus C2. And then for D, outward, it's going to come out like that, minus E3. These are the four normals to each of those four faces. Yeah, that sounds about right. Now, if I look at the surface areas, yeah, should I say four faces A, B. The surface areas, are A for the first one, and then, B, C, D. If I look at D, for instance, 
So I'm not going to show it, but it's quite clear that you just need to project the, the cosines of n, right? D is going to be a and 3, C is going to be a and 2, and B is going to be a and 1. Yeah, if you just collapse the tetrahedron onto the horizontal plane, you get the area D, and that's just n cosine this angle that's called that's n3 the coefficient the component of n okay so now i'm just going to write equilibrium so i have here in this case, balance of forces. So the traction on surface A is going to be this. The traction on surface B is going to be T of minus E1 Ta. Traction on surface C will be T of minus E2 Ta. And the traction on surface D and since it's at equilibrium it's all equal to zero. All that sum. Right? And that's for a tetrahedron. Now I'm just considering a tiny tetrahedron. The surface are just D, A, A, B, C, and D are just tiny. I don't need to integrate anymore. I can approximate that by the actual surface, right? I'll just write this now. Consider an infinitesimal. Hedron. And my first one is going to be T and A. The second one is going to be T minus E1, the area of B, which is A and 1. T minus E2, the area of C, which is A and 2. And the area of T is A and 3. All of this must be zero. And then I can see using my first consequence that T of minus C1 is minus T of E1, and so on and so forth. I can bring everything to the right hand side and I divide across by A. And I'll end up with Tn equals. E1 and 1 and 2 E3 and 3. Yeah, I just brought the second, third, and fourth terms to the right hand side, and then I flipped the sign again because of the, the first consequence. T of minus E1 is minus T of E1, and so on and so forth. Okay. So I'm nearly there now. Uh, TE1, TE2, TE3, these are the traction applied uh, on those faces, normal P1 into N3. So I'm just going to introduce uh, their components. These are forces per unit area. So uh, we're just going to use this uh, this name here. The first 
component, I want to call it sigma one one. And so on. So I'm going to use this this choice, this name sigma for S for stress. And then I'm going to use two indices. The first index is going to be referring to the normal. So sigma one, 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 two, one, three. These are referring to the components of TE1. And then the second index, one, two, three, is just the first, second, and third component. All right, so that's how it goes. Get your gist. That's just my choice of of, an, of names for the components. Oh, my mistake here. That was E1. Yeah. And now if I go back to T, T of N, I can see that it has components on the along E1, components along T of N here. We'll have components along E1, components along E2, components along E3. And then I have this multiplication here, times n1, times n2, times n3. I could see that this is like a matrix comp like, uh, multiplication, Tn. It's going to be like this, right? n1, n2, n3 times the first component of Tn. If I write the first component of the n, T one n, it's gonna be the first component of T E one, so that's sigma one one n one. First component of T E two schema two one. Yeah, I see now how it works. I'm gonna have those here. Two sigma one three sigma three sigma three three. Yeah, that's a compact way of writing the expression above for T, where the sigmas are the components of the traction along the normal to the unit vectors E1, E2, E3. Okay, and that's it. That's Cauchy's theorem. I can write this very neatly now as uh, algebraic expression Tn sigma T N. Where sigma yeah, I can see that there's something about the order of indices. So that's why I need to put my transpose. It's called the Cauchy press tensor. So that's pretty neat. Just the consequence of uh, Cauchy's assumption is that the traction T of N are linked linearly to the normal Unit vector, right? Sigma here. That's a that's a, a tensor. See, it can be represented by a matrix. That's independent of n, right? So the the 
functionality, the, the link between T and N is just linear, right? Sigma, if I go back here, those components here, that's independent of N. Very important. So yeah, sorry, you asked me. I can the sigma is function of position. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you can apply different forces in the on on different uh, parts of the body. I, I, I like I said earlier, I'm just lazy. Really, I should carry going back, going back here. I should carry that little x everywhere. I just got lazy. I just made explicit the dependence on n. And then why is that transpose? Yeah, so I just I just wrote it as it is. Uh, and you can see that in that first, uh, right? I just wrote the first, I just figured out that the first line was gonna be this, right? Just from the elements of the, the first component of Tn. And then that doesn't respect the mate uh, convention, if you want, right? In the matrix convention, AIJ, I is the row number and J is the column number. Whereas if I flip it, I get, I get this matrix here. That matrix respect the matrix convention for the indices. And then if I look at the matrix here, is the transpose of this matrix, which is why I put transpose. This is where the transpose comes from. I know, all confusing, but don't worry. Yeah, we still have uh, a few minutes. It turns out that sigma is symmetric. So whether you take transpose or not has no importance, at least in this course. I don't know if we'll have time to see that today, but anyway, we'll see it soon. Right, so the, the that answer tells you the fraction in the direction of N. i just give you an example. Example, imagine that you have a machine that can apply any sort of traction on the on the body. I right, just think of oh, where did I go? Uh, yeah, think of a traction machine, or or say, you know, when you're compressing things in the in the lab and so on and so forth. Maybe you can compress in one direction, pull in another. So imagine that you can create a state of stress in a in a cube, for instance. Consider you can create that at will. Cube, side A, subject to stress sigma seven zero minus two. Minus two zero four, something like that. Right, so I have a cube and then I want to know for instance what's what's the force on this face, right? My origin is at middle of the cube. So the face at x2 equals a is under attraction. And I know exactly from Cauchy's theorem that is going to be sigma t e2. So it'll be seven. Zero minus two, zero five zero one 
one zero. So it's going to be a vector, or that one is going to be simple zero, five, zero. It's going to be a vector in the E2 direction. Then I know that's going to be vector same magnitude, but opposite sense on this opposite face. Yeah, what about the face at the face at the top? The face at x3 equals a is under traction. T of E3 equals sigma T E3 equals, so now if I put zero, zero, 001, I'm gonna have minus two. Sorry, that wasn't clear. I was minus two, zero, four. Minus two, zero, four. So that's going to be a force that's going to be going one, two, and then four up force going like this t e3 and then here i'm going to have the opposite on the bottom face yeah so the force is not necessarily aligned with the normal to the face that's the case for the first one but not for the second one in this in this example Okay, so knowledge of the stress tells you everything you need to know now. And then, of course, we have to write equilibrium, balance of forces. Right, we've seen that. It must be zero. All the traction on the closed surface balance out. But now we've just seen through uh, Cauchy's theorem that it can be written like this. Sigma T and TA. And now I can use the divergence theorem And I have to write, be able to write that for any uh, subvolume of the of the body, and so it means that true for all subsets. So it means that it must be true locally. Divergence of sigma equals zero. That's the equation of equilibrium. All right? I can see here in my example at sigma was just constants, was just numbers. So if I take divergence of that sigma, I get zero. So I can subject my cube to this force and the equilibrium will be uh, enforced. Okay, that's 10 minutes. So only be lately I realized I should uh, stop after 15 minutes, after an hour. So there's another part now about uh, writing the balance of, of torques, of moments. Uh, I can do that now, it will take about five minutes or I can stop. So, uh, Let's do another another poll. You might have places to go. Continue for five minutes. Any case. 
Darn you, Paul. Just let me know. One person says no. One person say two, two, two. Okay. So if people say no, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. If if you have to leave, you you can leave now and you can catch up on the on the recording. In the end, it's not it's not it's not that crucial to the like the demonstrate the proof itself is not important to the course itself. You will see. What's important is the result, and the result is that if you write balance. Ah. Why is it not working now? All right. Balance of moments. You will find that it means that's the consequence number three that the stress tensor must be symmetric. And I'll just show you how it goes. I'll just sketch the proof now. So I just gonna take a elementary cube like this. So very small volume. The center is the origin. And then I have the center of those faces, those three faces I can see, and then the three behind. And then on those faces, I apply here that would be T2. And that would be T3. And then there. E1, and then there's the opposites of those vectors in the back, right? And then on that elementary cube, elementary infinitesimal, if you want, I must write that the sum of all the moments is zero. Balance of moments. Right, so if I start with that point here, this point here, that's the point that coordinates A, zero, zero. I'm gonna write that the position of that point, A, zero, zero, cross that vector force, that force vector T E one must be zero. have this for this one, and then I have the one at the back as well, which is going to be like this, D of minus E1. So that the center of that face is at minus A, and the force there is D of minus E1. And then I do that for all six faces. And you can see that it's twice the same quantity because of consequence one. Zero A cross. So it's be boring. Zero zero minus A. Yeah. So I sum up. I have twice. Zero and T E one T E one I'm just gonna do one zero zero times this matrix it's just gonna be sigma one one sigma one two sigma one three yeah gonna be the first column of the sigma one plus two A zero then the second column, then the third column. 
oh boy, I'm writing fast. And then I have to do three cross products. And zero, zero, zero equals two A. This cross product is gonna be zero minus sigma one, three, sigma two. This cross product is gonna be sigma two, three, zero, minus sigma two, one. And the final is going to be minus sigma three, two, sigma three, one, and zero. And so I have three lines here. The first line tells me that sigma two, three minus sigma three, two is zero. The second line tells me the minus sigma one, three plus sigma three, one is zero. And then the last line, okay. And that's exactly what it means for a matrix to be symmetric. The off-diagonal components are the same as symmetric with respect to diagonal, if you want. Sigma equals sigma. Yeah, I managed within five minutes. I see there's two questions. Time is maybe. Is X the center? Yeah, X is the center of the face. Sorry, yeah, here, center of the face. So this one, this X here is gonna be at zero, A zero, and this one here is gonna be at zero, zero, A. So these are the, those three vectors. And then there's the face, center of the faces that are opposite that I, I don't see on my 2D representation of the cube. Why can't you just consider center of the faces of instead of over all positions? Yes. So that, that's what I hear because it's a tiny cube, right? If it's a big cube, then it matters where you where you apply the force. If the here the cube is so small, the faces are so small that I'm just talking about force applied to the, the area of the of the cube of the of the face. Okay. So sorry, I went a bit over time. Like I say, th these are all important theorems in the end. Nobody will ask you to, to, to prove them. It was just to satisfy your intellectual curiosity in case you are wondering where they will come from. From now on, we'll just apply them. And the, the two important results is that the sigma is symmetric. And the other one is that equilibrium is di divergence of sigma equals zero. And then, of course, what is sigma? Sigma gives you access to the traction on each face or each surface area of, of a body that's deformed. That's it. Thanks so much for coming. I'll see you uh, next Monday then. And uh, best of luck. Take care. Stop the recording now.